How's it going, everybody? I want to first thank everyone who came out to the my live stream yesterday. It was a really great turnout. I My deepest thanks to all of you who went out and joined. And to those of you who missed it, I know that some of you couldn't make it because of timing, and that's okay. Just I know you guys went back and watched it. But I want to thank everyone. Just It was incredible to see that kind of response to those uh, who came and saw the live stream. And I really appreciate it very much. So that being said, we had a lot that happened in baseball yesterday. So we, we had a 22 pitch at bat. We had home runs being robbed. We had Major League Baseball coming down on Trevor Bauer yet again for violation of uniform. So we're gonna get into that in just a second. Without further ado, let's just get into the video. back to the Daily Baseball Report. Coach Matt coming at you with another video where all we do is talk baseball, baseball news, and anything related to baseball and coverage of major leagues. We're on the road to 1K by opening day. We're about two weeks away, so please share this video with everyone that you can. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and like the video if you like the content, obviously. All right, to start things off, we're going to talk about Akil Badu. What a name, Akil Badu of the Detroit Tigers, hitting Oppo Taco today. Pretty much, I really like this guy's name, and honestly didn't know this guy existed until a few, like a week ago, and he's hit a couple of home runs now, so it's kind of cool to see this guy come through with this kind of cool name, and honestly, I'm on the Badu train. I think that's cool. And without going into too much, and I know it's just spring training, Look at Spencer Torkelson. This guy's one for 17. I know the Tigers are pretty high on this guy. So hopefully this guy figures it out soon. I know AJ Hinch says that he's just going to roll this guy out and, until he figures it out. So let's, let's hope he figures it out soon because one for 17 in spring training is kind of an, a gnarly stat. Lance McCullers Jr. had a good start for the Houston Astros. He had four innings pitched, three hits, six Ks, and his, he's dropped his ERA to 2.57. He looks pretty good. You know, I, I'm not a big fan of the Astros. Everyone who knows me knows I'm not a fan of the Astros. He's he's coming right. He looks pretty good, I have to admit. He looks good. Carlos Correa and Yulis Gurriel hit their first spring training home runs. Good for them. And I definitely believe that Seager is better than Correa without a doubt. That's just my personal opinion. Being a Dodger fan, I'm a little bit biased. But, you know... I don't think Correa is all that good. I think he is a uh, product of the trash, ban trash can. Speaking of trash cans, Jose Altuve is hitting a buck fifty, and I think he's been hitting about that high ever since they, everyone found out that he was, uh, you know, cheating with the trash can. Not going to say it publicly until now, but it warms my heart to see Altuve not do so well because of the trash cans. That's kind of terrible to say. On the other side of the ball, Washington Nationals' Steven Strasburg pitched 2.1 innings, gave up one hit, one walk, and had four Ks. He left the game a little early. He has a tender calf. He had a little calf injury. It's supposed to not be super meant to be a big thing. It was probably just a cramp. It might have been dehydrated. Who knows? But not supposed to be a major injury. Juan Soto went two for three in the game. It might be turning his spring training around. Nathan Evaldi threw yesterday, and he did not do all that great. He pitched Four innings, he gave up seven hits and four earned runs. He had three Ks, but the big thing is he had 10 pitches that were over 100 miles an hour. So the guy is just flamethrowing. So he's back to what seems to be his 2018 form. On the other side of the ball, Kenta Maeda pitched four innings, gave up one walk, struck out five. His ERA is still zero. Byron Buxton hit his first home run of the spring and seems to be turning his spring around. The Atlanta Braves hitting is seems to be coming around. Ronald Acuna Jr. hit another home run. It seems to me this guy's either a home run or a strikeout. How is he supposed to be a 40-40 guy if he doesn't hit singles and doubles and steal bases? So I wonder how that's going to happen. Will Smith and A.J. Minter also pitched one inning each and no earned runs, and Smith had three strikeouts, and Minter had one, so they're both having their strong start, continuing from their good season last year. And another thing about the Braves, Jason Kipnis signed with the Braves and hit a home run. Now, the Braves, that's a sneaky good move for the Braves. If they get anything other than 2020 Jason Kipnis, they got a deal. This guy has always been good. 
He's always been an above average hitter. You know, if they get if they get prime time Cleveland Jason Kipnis, that's a really sneaky good steal of a deal. And a congrats to their GM for signing this guy. Off to the New York Mets. The Michael Conforto went three for three. He had two runs and two RBIs. Pete Alonso hit an RBI single. But the story of the game was 100%. Luis Guillorme had a 22-pitch at-bat against A.J. Hicks and walked. He had the longest at-bat in this current time. The longest at-bat in the major leagues in regular season is 21 pitches by Brandon Belt against the Angels. And he actually had a really incredible bat, just like Luis Guillermo, where he just fouled off, I don't know, 12 pitches. And then he eventually flew out to uh, right field. And Luis Guillermo actually walked and just fired up the bullpen. Love seeing this. How do you not love baseball when you see something like that? That is just a, a grade A competitive pitcher versus competitive hitter. And it got to the point where... You felt that the, the hitter had the advantage because everything Hicks was throwing, he was just right on the ball, right on it, just just missing the ball. Great at bat. Love seeing something like this, just because it's good for baseball, it's good for entertainment value, and it also like if you're looking from the hitter's perspective, like you're about to knock that pitcher out. He's a relief pitcher. You're about to knock him out of the game, and you can get to the next, uh, get to the next arm. You know, so that's that's huge. That and he just moved the, the lineup down. So. Just a wonderful at-bat by Luis Guillermo. Speaking of St. Louis, Yadier Molina went two for three with two runs scored. Tyler O'Neill went three for three. Other than the A.J. Hicks, <laughs> now he pitched to one batter, gave up one walk, and uh, that run came around to score, so his ERA is literally exponential. But Dylan Bundy of the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, I keep wanting to say Anaheim Angels. I grew up with the Anaheim Angels. I just, I don't, I can't. It's just, I can't do it. Can anyone else in the comment section below tell me, do you guys call it the LA Angels or do you say the Anaheim Angels? Has anyone ever said the LA Angels in their lifetime? Like it just, be, it still feels weird. And it's been what, 10 years that they changed their name? Not eight years, something like that? I I, I can't say it. It's, it's it, the, the Anaheim Angels. From here on out, you guys, I'm saying Anaheim Angels. Uh, that's, that's how it is. Dylan Bundy has been named the opening day starter for the Angels in 2020, and he pitched today. He pitched 4.2 innings. He gave up two hits, one walk, struck out two, and his spring training ERA is still zero. In San Diego, Hugh Darvish pitched three innings. He had three Ks, and his spring training ERA is also still zero, like Dylan Bundy. Speaking of web gems, the only good thing that happened for the Oakland Athletics was this. That phone ring come regular season. That one's hit center field, and it's hit well. Reed to the wall, Reed at the wall. He leaps, and he caught it. The Buddy Reed show continues in the desert. Buddy Reed, he's got my heart, man. He's got my heart. The guy plays great defense. He's a defensive-minded guy. Offense still needs a little work. He still needs to get that offense going. But either way, I like Buddy Reed. This guy's great. Lance Lynn of the Chicago White Sox pitched 3.1 innings, gave up one hit, three walks, and he had four Ks, and his spring ERA is still zero. Oh, moving over to the Kansas City Royals versus the Los Angeles Dodgers. Everyone wants to know, Bobby Witt Jr., what happened? He went one for three with a home run, and he scored two runs. He actually reached on an error and scored from second base on a ball that didn't even leave the infield. This guy is pretty incredible. And not only that, if you watch this guy sprint, we don't. I don't know if we have a stat graph on his sprint speed yet because he hasn't been in the major leagues. His profile hasn't been completely completed. He is as close to a five-tool player that the Royals have. It's it, this guy needs to be in the big leagues. But as we all know, based off of what the Seattle Mariners GM talked about just a couple weeks ago, there's going to be service time manipulation. This guy's not going to make the team. Just like Elliot Ramos of the San Francisco Giants, they're going to keep him in the minor leagues because they're going to want to control this player for an additional two seasons because they're going to keep him to a certain age before he starts in the major leagues. This has to go away. The minor league manipulation has got to go away because why wouldn't you want to win right now? Just because you're going to have to play, pay the player two seasons early for the money the player's rightfully owed, does it, it doesn't make sense to me. Win now at all costs. I, 
I don't know about you, but don't you like winning the World Series? Like, when the Royals won the World Series in 2015, wouldn't they want to go back and win it again? Like, it doesn't make any sense to just hold your players back and not have a chance to win the World Series. I'm not saying that the Royals are a World Series team. They are very good. They are sneaky good. Now, can they beat the Blue Jays and the Yankees and the White Sox? It remains to be seen. We've got to get into the season and start seeing how players, you know, things pan out. But you get the idea. And moving over to the Dodgers, Corey Seager keeps his completely red hot streak going with another home run. Gavin Lux had two hits and two at-bats. He scored a run. Julio Urias pitched 2.1 innings. He gave up five runs. Only one of those runs were earned. The Dodgers had a boatload of errors in those early innings. I think it was, who knows what was going on there. But he did have 5Ks, so Urias is capable. He is doing all right. It's just, man, that uh, those errors, that, that'll always bite you. You can't win if your team is making errors. Victor Gonzalez, Blake Trinan, Kenley Jansen, Jimmy Nelson all pitched great. They didn't give up any runs. They looked great. So the bullpen and some of the other arms the Dodgers have are looking good. Just was the errors that kind of screwed with Arias as well as obviously giving up the home run. All right, so Trevor Bauer had a tweet where he was talking about the situation for Major League Baseball. So the MLB saying, we can't market players if they don't want to market themselves. Player markets himself. MLB, that is strictly prohibited. We are going to fine you if you do that again. I don't understand. I just don't understand. Like Kevin Durant has his own shoe line. Kyrie Irving has his own shoe line. All these other players that are big, Ronaldo has his own apparel line. All these, Michael Jordan has the Jordan line. They have endorsements, they have deals, they have all these things to promote themselves. Not necessarily the team, but themselves. And not only that, the players in those sports can wear those shoes and they can put their different colors on them. They can do whatever they want as long as, you know, that shoe is what they want to wear. Heck, it doesn't even have to be the same colors as the team you're wearing. I mean, they, they typically keep it pretty much on brand for the team they play for. But I'm sure there's a player that'll wear pink shoes when it's Mother's Day. You know, like in baseball, they always have the pink the pink accents on all the teams. And then they have the, the weekend where the players get to pick their own nicknames. They have a specialty jersey there. Why isn't that Major League Baseball not allowing players to be themselves and market themselves and build a brand outside of themselves so that way they could basically be, you know, be themselves. The the same thing is the same thing is having it in hockey. Hockey is restricting players from doing things that you know for a fact that they would benefit not only financially but just as a whole in, in the in the grand scheme of sports and sports marketing. The connection that play people have with players on their Instagrams and Twitters and uh, social media profiles is very much better in the NBA and NFL world than it is on the MLB and NHL side. I think Juan Soto has like. 285,000 followers and on Twitter, like 285,000. Like, like there are YouTubers out there that have more than 5 million subscribers and it's just YouTubers. It's not like a specialty athlete like Juan Soto. It just, it blows my mind that MLB is being this strict. Heck, you could barely even see what was on his belt. Did, now, I mean, in the comments below, who know, knew that he did this? Like, did anyone see that that on his belt during the game? Did anyone even see it? Because I watched that game, I didn't see it. <laughs> so, I, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like this is completely bogus. Like, the players, you should be able to wear your own batting gloves, gloves, accessories on the arms. Like, Marcelo Zuna wears the, the, or, the, the neon yellow item, uh, like sweatbands, cleats. You, you should be able to put things on those items and still be able to be in what is known as the uniform, like that would still be part of the uniform, that's fine. I would think it would be pretty cool to design your own set of stuff and then you can have your own website and sell it off. Like, I think that would be cool. Like, I don't know about you, but I'd buy some Trevor Bauer stuff. You know, Kershaw had his own Kershaw line. Heck, I bought, I, <laughs> I bought Kershaw's beer. You know, like he has, it's called the Wicked Curve and it's, it's a grapefruit beer, it's really good. It's a good summer drinking beer. And I bought that. 
I mean, so why can't why can't these players do something like that but for the field? Like, it, they have to go out and go to a brewery and make their own beer? It doesn't make any sense. Like, why not have these, these things in the game? Have these things in the game. Like, if you want your bat to be designed a certain way, why can't you have your bat designed a certain way? You get your name on it. Like, why can't you do anything else to it? It doesn't... Like, remember Bryce Harper had the pink bat? That would be so cool if he had that bat throughout the season. There's my rant for the day on, on that. It's just This is why I'm making this channel. It's because things like this, issues like this, need to get pushed out. And if more people create an issue with this, like the public, the fan base, Major League Baseball might eventually change things because the, the players will have something to stand on. Not just them and their agent fighting for something. It would be them, their agent, and then the world of baseball fandom would be also going for it. It just... This is one reason why I like having this channel is being able to talk about this stuff. I want to know what your thoughts are. Comment below. Please, please, please comment below. I want to talk about it. All right, so that does it for today's video. Please hit the subscription button, hit the notification bell, and smash the like button because it really helps out the channel. That's all I ask. Please hit the like button. Without further ado, we will see you tomorrow.